Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Bangkok. It's dark and you probably know what that means, it's time for a new nighttime episode. And today I'm going to show the lens that you've probably seen before, if not, a quick introduction. This is the Lawa Nanomorph 35. It's an anamorphic lens. Um, if you don't know what it means, in a nutshell, it's basically allow me to uh, get more like panoramic shots, similar to an X-Pan. Not quite as wide, but wide enough, I would say. And this lens has an, an aperture of uh, f or t 2.4, so for nighttime it's pretty good. And yeah, I absolutely love this lens and uh, yeah, anamorphic lenses in general, I think it's a pretty cool thing to, to shoot. Even though it's more geared towards uh, filming videos and not so much for photography, but you can use them for photography and the results are pretty spectacular, I would say. Alright guys, uh, a little bit more about this later on in the video, so without further ado, Lawa Nanomorph, Lumix S5, that's the camera I'm uh, using for shooting this. Bangkok, let's go. There's a lot of tuk-tuks, especially around Chinatown, and they are cool, but I wouldn't take one because these guys almost always are trying to rip you off. Often a taxi is cheaper. Now you might ask yourself, why the 35mm? Because uh, Lawa also offers a 27 and a 50mm. But all three lenses, including this 35, are um, made for APS-C sensors. So they're not covering the whole uh, full frame sensor. But the 35 is an exception here because it covers, um, I would say 90% of the sensor. And this is pretty awesome because it's a very small lens for an anamorphic lens and you can use it on full frame. I mean, not, it's not perfect for full frame, but you can use it. So that's why I picked the 35. And in general, I think uh, it's a good compromise because um, the image is like a 35, the height and the width is like a 24. So I think that's not too wide. And the 27, if, if it would cover full frame, the entire full frame it might be a little too wide. Uh, I would try it, of course, but uh, yeah, it's, rather geared toward, towards APS-C and if I would use an APS-C camera I would of course uh, get the 27 instead of the 35 here. Alright guys, let's continue shooting. The vignetting reminds you on the X-Pen especially with a 30 millimeter um, and that's why it came with a, or in general the lenses came with filters to compensate that. Here in this case I could crop it out but I don't care.
right, let's quickly give you the settings that I'm using at shooting at uh, f2.4, uh, so wide open, and I'm shutter speed is 200th of a second, and uh, all the ISO set auto, and there's not much else to it. I mean, uh, I use exposure compensation at minus two thirds of a stop. And I'm using burst mode because this helps me, uh, because it's manual focus, this helps me uh, to get more keepers in focus as I'm moving closer to my subject because I'm using uh, basically zone focusing. So I'm focusing to a certain distance and then, um, yes, I hope that things are in focus. And because I can guess distances quite all right, it works out quite often, so surprisingly. All right, guys, let's continue shooting. Guys, so the shooting anamorphic lens is very similar to shooting in the X-Pen when you shoot film, but especially when you shoot at night, um, you can do so much more because with an X-Pen and the aperture of f4, I was pretty much limited to shooting a flash at night. But with this lens, I mean, not this lens filming right now, but uh, the nanomorph, I can get away with uh, shooting at night with the digital camera, and I think it's pretty cool. So it really gives me this uh, X-Pen vibe, but in a digital camera. I mean, unfortunately, there's no um, digital camera that has a sensor in the format of a, an X-Pen, but maybe an anamorphic lens could be something to, that makes it maybe irrelevant, so you can shoot with a three by two sensor, or even four by three and get wider shots. So it's actually pretty cool. So I think Anamorphic, if you haven't tried it, maybe give it a shot. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty sweet, as you can see in the images. All right, let's get back right into the action and shoot some more. Along the whole strip there are so many tungsten lights, a paradise for everyone shooting Cinestill 800T or any other tungsten film. Alright guys, if you want to learn from me, uh, if you want to improve your street photography skills, um, consider coming to one of my workshops. You can see the upcoming ones over here and there will be plenty more in the future. More on the ones that are upcoming right now and the future ones you will find on my website, um, which will, you can also see here, but there's also the link in the video description. And besides that, um, yeah, because people will ask again, I use my, my color profiles for Lightroom to edit these 
uh, these files here. So yeah, I have a separate video about how I edit uh, the anamorphic files because there's an extra step involved, but you'll see it in that video. All right, guys, uh, let's shoot some more. In fact, that was actually true. Today's video is sponsored by my store. Currently for a limited amount of time there's a 20% discount running on all of my street photography zines shot on film and also on my color profiles for Lightroom that make it super easy and fast to edit raw files from any digital camera. The link to my store is in the video description. I must have bumped the camera and it's now pointing downwards, but fortunately though, that's only the case for one image. Well, in order to keep this or this lens fairly small and lightweight, they had to cut some corners. And one thing you can see, and I, I think it's you will see in pretty much all the not crazy expensive anamorphic lenses, is that on the on the sides there there's some distortion that is visible, uh, as especially if you have straight lines. But um, there's a way there's a way to correct those uh, distortions. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot do this in Lightroom, but I show this in my video that I made about how I process these files. I also show how I get rid of the distortion. If it's a problem for most images and most of these images in this video, I will probably not do it, but in some I might. So in case you're wondering, this will be in the video. All right, let's get back right into the action. I just came here because it's super loud there and it's a little bit more quiet here. So let's get back and let's shoot some more. Alright guys, that's it uh, for today's episode, shooting the Lawa Nanomorph 35 here in Bangkok in Chinatown at night. If you like this episode, you know what to do, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and we will see each other very soon in the next one. Until then, auf Wiedersehen!